Hey everyone, in this video I'll be talking about a MIDI controller with weighted narrower keys that I've been building. Um, I'll talk about uh, why I'm building it, how I've built it, and what the pros and cons are of this design. Um, but first of all, um, I'll just show you a small demo of what it's like when it's played. Uh, what you're hearing um, in this demo is the guitar sound from Pianotech, which has just been released, Pianotech 8, um, with their new guitar instrument pack, which I'm quite excited about. For the rest of this video I'll talk about three main things. Firstly I'll talk about why I built it, second of all I'll talk about the action and how it's constructed, and finally I'll talk a bit about the electronics. So why build a DIY digital piano? Um, so first of all for me it's about having narrower keys. Um, this is an issue that I've um, been obsessed with for a little while. Um, and I'm convinced that I would um, be able to play with a bit less tension to be able to do some things um, easier that I, I can't do quite so easily now um, and have a little bit less tension in my hand if the piano keys were a little bit narrower. Um, and the piano as it stands is a one-size-fits-all instrument, um, which is pretty crazy when you think about, um, about the range of hand spans that have to play from children to adults or adults with um, small hands. Um, and this mismatch between hand size and piano keys can really contribute to injury and tension and if you're interested in this issue then I really encourage you to watch um, Lionel's video on the issue which um, I'll link to in the description. Um, so there isn't presently a digital piano cheaply available mass-produced um, so that was what got me to think about building my own um, and the idea has been to build something that should be easily buildable by myself and by others too, um, so with not too many tools needed to build it. Um, less important, I'm also interested in having an instrument that has a shallower key dip um, and is a bit lighter than a traditional piano, um, just because I, I like the idea of having an instrument like that, and so I've incorporated that um, into this version. So now I'll talk a little bit about the action and the construction of it. Um, so as you'll notice, um, it is just weights connected to the end of key stick, so there is no proper hammer action, um, no free-flying hammer, which does make, make it a lot simpler to build. And I've nevertheless been um, very impressed with how it feels to play. There's still a nice feeling of um, moving maths. Um, the next thing to notice is that all of those key sticks are identical in width, um, which makes it easier to weight each key relative to one another, and it makes them dead easy to cut out with a table saw. Um, so once you've got <coughs> a whole bunch of key sticks that are all the same width, um, the next thing to do is to attach key tops to them. So here, if I can get this to focus. Um, this is a laser cut key top and they're very easy to glue on as you just center them um, with the tail of the key top. Center the key stick in the middle of the tail of the key top and um, that's just where they should be. Um, and there are also some laser cut buttons so everywhere that the key interacts with the pins um, which guide the key, um, the key stick doesn't actually touch them, it's just these buttons. And having them laser cut 
um, makes them very easy to um, and attached like this makes it very easy to swap them out for new ones and test different sizes. Uh, one thing that really worried me was the issue of bouncing. So I played a lot of digital pianos where um, the keys bounce horribly, and it turned out the solution for that was um, was in this button here. And it's the hole here is angled a little bit, which means when the key's depressed, it's tight on the pin going through it, and when it's released, it's loose. Um, and that takes care of bounce that can occur potentially at the bottom or top of the keystroke um, and yeah, it turned out to be quite a simple solution um, to a problem as um, a bit worried would be difficult to eliminate. The other laser cut bit are these templates um, so these these are used to um, to mark um, to mark on these rails where these pins should go so that they can be easily drilled. Unfortunately I um, I didn't do the best job of drilling them accurately, I didn't have a very good setup when I was doing this um, this time around um, and so it's a bit inaccurate and so you might notice that the keys are a little bit sloppy with how they sit relative to one another. Um, so I still need to talk about electronics um, and so how this works is there's a magnet attached to the bottom of each key on a screw, They're literally just stuck to the screw by the power of magnetism, and those are Hall effect sensors um, at the rear of the key that pick up the key position, and from there there's a simulation run in software um, that simulates a hammer. Um, if the key stops moving halfway down, the hammer will keep moving, and if gravity doesn't stop it from doing so, the hammer can strike a string, so you still get um, playing notes from half presses, that sort of thing. Um, it turned out to be very, actually quite straightforward to make. Um, these are all quite cheap components. Um, those Hall effect sensors um, cost maybe $2 for 10. Um, this Raspberry Pico, which runs the software, costs, um, they cost maybe $5 a pop, and then these MPCP 3008s cost uh, maybe $5 a pop as well, so um, each of them reads 8 sensors and feeds that back to the Raspberry Pico. Um, so overall for 2 octaves worth, uh, it was well under $50 for all of this, including the wires and the breadboards. And so to scale this up, um, even if the Picos went fast enough and needed a Pico for every 2 octaves, it would um, still really wouldn't be very expensive to build all of this, um, only needing a few more Picos, which would cost $15 at $5 a piece. Um, and no piano would be complete without pedals, um, so this is the pedal unit. Um, again a Raspberry Pico, um, this is the Wi-Fi variant because I'm experimenting with um, being able to change parameters um, using Wi-Fi um, and from a phone or something like that. that. And um, the idea is to have um, three continuous pedal inputs, um, which can then be assigned. Um, so in the demo, I was using one of the pedals to control the pluck point. Yeah. Uh, so final thoughts. Um, next version will be more keys, unless before then there comes available some kind of mass produced digital piano that plays okay that has narrower keys, uh, which would be really exciting um, if that were to happen. Um, if you haven't done so already, I'd really encourage you to watch Lionel's video on the issue. Um, and yeah, I'm very happy with how all of this has worked out. Turned out to be a lot of work, but hopefully the, the next version won't be quite so much work now that a lot of the details have been worked out. Um, if you have any comments um, or queries, I'd really love to hear them. Um, please just drop a line in the comments below. Thanks for watching.